Good leadership could never happen as long as the ego was driving it. But extraordinary leadership could happen when the ego loosened its grip. Your customers don't care what you think about your business or your product. They only care what they think. If your ego is still running the show, it's really going to be difficult to reach high performance because nobody's waking up in the morning trying to figure out how to make you look more important. If you can detach the ego, you can do tremendous things. You can transform countries with this stuff. Can you imagine having an executive team that had nothing to lose but wanted to win in a marketplace? That's a fierce battle. Guest tonight offers principles he says are essential for today's corporate leaders. Think Samurai. I was realizing that there was a lot of leadership training going on, but not a lot of great leaders appearing in society. The samurai realized that unless they could bring together a belief that could cut through all the bull crap, that could slice through all the stuff that stopped their companies, they could never achieve those extraordinary levels of performance that were necessary. When I talk to uh, executives, I find that 30 to 70 percent of their mental energy is being wasted on issues like uh, looking good to the boss, being positioned for the next promotion, uh, winning the next argument, uh, but not on the customer or strategy. And I think that's what frustrates CEOs. We always hire people based on skill and experience, but we always fire them based on behavior. It's amazing what happens when you put behavioral agreements in place. The reason they're powerful is they're behaviorally observable. There's no way out. The Japanese samurai of the ninth century were more than warriors. They were visionaries. They lived by a rigid code of principles that some argue is the basis for one of the most effective management forms in history. My guest is Don Sminka, and he interprets the code for today's executives, the uh, author of the book, uh, Code to the Executive. I'm here to help you clear up a lot of the issues you have within your organization. The code is a very important part of that because they discovered a few things that I think you'll feel are, are important too. But with this principle, I found was the foundation for high performance leadership. In fact, they made it the first chapter and it is the first chapter in the book. I'd like to welcome Don Schmidt. Yeah. Thanks. His talk Thanks was very, very inspiring. Uh, it got us all really motivated and excited about the opportunities that laid in front of us. Um, he had a wonderful way of um, really putting real-life business situations Actually, and um, humor into we're here to collect his presentation. So it kept years. the interest. And um, it was really uh, a very thought-provoking, exciting day for us. Okay. I was honored. I told my wife, I said, I said, I said, Mary, I'm going to California to talk to a room full of chairs. And she said, isn't that how most of your speeches end up? <laughs> Actually, Ken, I, I, have to, I have to let you know that all the stuff about the tech community thing and uh, the issue of values and collegiality, well, we were only kidding. <laughs> This was just the typical hazing we do for new CEOs coming into the tech organization. I don't want to sound too religious here. I mean, I, if you must know, I'm a recovering Catholic. And although I was going to talk to Lou about Episcopalian, because I understand it's like, isn't that like Catholic light? You only get like half the guilt or something, I think he said. So. I was almost Southern Baptist, though, but they don't believe in premarital sex, <laughs> as opposed to most religions that don't believe in postmarital sex. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, my grandmother confided in me later on. She was a strict Southern Baptist. She, she, she told me that the reason they didn't believe in premarital sex is because they were afraid it would lead to dancing. <laughs> Hi, this is Debbie Summers. May I help you? Before Don spoke, I think there was a high degree of frustration. We were four individuals uh, with high degrees of skill, but augmented, and we weren't really sure how to pull together um, and bring all of our skills together to work for the company in a high-performing way. Um, and he took away a lot of that frustration, and we really focused on doing some strategic and visionary things and before that I think we were just putting out fires. We know we should be driving the strategy of the company, influencing that, making sure we know what all that means and making sure everyone else knows what all that means, but yet what happens in real life is we tend to get torn, we tend to get frustrated, we tend to get distracted by operational issues. How's it going? Is it running okay? Oh, really? We 
really didn't have a market strategy before Don came. And what Don did is he gave us the information and the insight to be able to go out and look at customers and say, what's this customer really wanting? Because the market's really changed. And Don's insightfulness into the market, as well as his just energy in presenting uh, to us the way to do it, just fired everybody up to get out and really want to go after certain markets. And he got us to think, not from our point of view, but from our customer's point of view. Don got us to uh, look at the market as something we serve versus something that buys from us. Teamwork, okay, profit. What else? Trust, okay. what else? Devoted. Opportunity, okay. <laughs> Stress, somebody say chaos, what else? Complicated, what else? Unpleasant. <laughs> right, this is everybody else's business, not ours, right, exactly. Those look like two different lists to me. If you look real close, you'll see the subtle patterns. Yeah, it looks like there's a slight performance gap here between the ideal and the real. And a lot of times they try to close this gap by throwing time and money at it. So I can only come up with one conclusion. This ain't fixed. Thank you very much for your time this morning. <laughs> Samurai sword. Actually, you know how hard it is to get this through uh, airport security? Samurai is not very well understood in this country because uh, the most popular samurai we have is uh, John Belushi. But, you know, they weren't really always chopping each other up. They actually ran very sophisticated organizations for centuries at peace. But the sword was a great symbol, so I thought I'd, I'd bring it to just share with you, uh, you know, the, the symbol of what they used and what they honored. However capable, eloquent, and handsome one may be born, if they have no integrity, they are of no use at all, for the way of the executive requires one's conduct be correct in all points. Replacing Jenny. I became the new CEO of this company in the beginning of last year, and Don was able to come in and instill a sense of um, entrepreneurship as well as direction and motivation in order really to get the executive team talking about high performance, about mission, values, purposes, and really get us back on track. There are two approaches to try to generate results, content and process interventions. And these are things like total quality management, so that one out of phase re-engineering caught on, and that was popular, and that had its three-year life cycle, now whatever dollars next year's book past is. Five to 10 years in leadership development, tapes, seminars, books, gurus, speeches on leadership. Where, Where are all the leaders? Are all the leaders? Let me share with you uh, a, an ancient model that's been used for thousands of years. The one thing that executives want that's undeniable are results, right? Behavior drives results. What you're trying to do is you're trying to alter behavior. And content and process doesn't alter behavior. We believe, we believe, we believe. All the people that are causing problems in your organizations in these areas here are being driven by some belief that's different than yours. So if you're not running your organization according to beliefs, you've got a problem because you're leaving a lot of money on the table because this is where passion lives. I just can't imagine going back to an organization and a structure um, prior to Don speaking. It was amazing that someone could come in in such a short period of time completely change the way we looked at our market. This is all obvious stuff. I'm just helping you remember what you already know. We really created a sense of hope and sense of future. Uh, and that really passed around through the office and becomes contagious to one another. Oh, I'd never go back the way it was before Don came into the picture. Where are where where are, where are all the leaders? leaders?